Hello, I'm Heather, and this is my coworker Shibita. We are both product engineers on the network analyst team, and we focus on the vehicle routing problem, or VRP. We are here today to talk to you about creating high density routes with the VRP solver. We have listed here several scenarios that we categorize as high density routing, or sometimes called residential routing. Now, unfortunately, none of these are what we have designed and developed our VRP solver for. However, we get questions along the lines of, we have this high density routing scenario that we need to solve, and our only option is the RTS platform. How can we make this work? So our team has put our heads together and come up with some tips and workflows that we would try. So what do I mean our VRP solver isn't designed for this? A typical VRP problem, and what our solver has been designed around, has customer locations scattered throughout a region, and you might have areas with several in the same neighborhood, but there are a lot of streets with no customer locations at all. And so when looking for a good solution on these, it's about finding a low cost way to divide up the customer locations and go from one point in the region to the next. For high density, however, there are multiple customer locations on most streets. Or in some cases, visiting the actual street edge is the goal, like street sweeping. So in these cases, you're looking for how to split up the region so that you can efficiently go from one street edge to the next, covering all of them. Now it seems like a subtle difference because in both cases you're wanting to go from one point to the next efficiently. They just happen to be a lot closer together for high density routing. But actually, the research literature splits these into two distinct problem types, and the approach to solving them is very different. Presented here are the tips and workflows we would try to get a good solution for high density routing with our VRP solver. So next, let's talk through what we think makes a good solution. One of the main goals with fleet routing scenarios is to reduce the total operating costs through minimizing distance and time needed to get to all the customer locations. But we also commonly hear that the results need to have well clustered routes. By that, I mean that a single vehicle or route handles everything in the neighborhood and then moves to the next neighborhood over. And when they're in their operating areas, the routes don't crisscross each other. So like in the picture here, the region is divided into four quadrants and each section is handled by a different route. Also to get an efficient route, it's best to traverse each street just once or in the case of needing to go down the street in both directions, just once in each direction. And when you do need to go down the street multiple times, all of the locations on that street should be serviced by the same route and consecutively. Lastly, we know that a lot of these scenarios are done with larger vehicles where U-turns can be more dangerous. So it's preferable to go around the block than to make a U-turn at an intersection. So U-turns should only happen at the end of dead end street. All right, now let's start talking about setting things up in the VRP solver. We have a lot of different parameters and settings to be able to support many different problem scenarios. Highlighted here is what's needed for a high density routing problem. Just like every VRP problem, we need to specify the orders, depots, and routes. The orders are the customer locations you're trying to visit. The depots are where the day starts and ends, such as the main office or where the vehicles are parked. And the routes, are what we use to model both the driver and the vehicle constraints. For example, on the driver's side, it could be things like how long is the workday, or when does overtime cost start? And on the vehicle side, it could be things like how much trash can the truck actually carry? Spatial clustering is a parameter that we want to make sure is turned on so that we get those well-clustered solutions. And the last one is overage, which is something we don't typically talk about but it allows you to get into some capabilities that we do not expose through our normal parameters, either because it's very specific and non common or it's something that we're still working on, but we wanna expose for those that we know could be useful. Since we don't typically talk about overrides, I'd like to dive a little deeper into that, and then when we're in our first demo, we'll discuss the others in some detail. In this case, we have two overrides that we think could be useful for high density routing. The first one is called Optimize for Local Orders, and this gets into some of the new algorithm development that we are working on for better clustering, sequencing of orders within a single route, and the solve time. Since this is something we are still working on, it's currently only supporting a subset of our full parameters. But what it does support fits really nicely into high-density routing scenarios. 
You can see the full listing of the required parameter configurations at the end of the slide deck. But a few examples are it doesn't support time windows, not really a big problem here, and all of the routes need to be modeled exactly the same, again, something we typically see for high density routing scenarios. The third point there shows the format for how to input the override. The second override is RSP penalty factor, which again helps improve the clustering of the solution, but doesn't have the performance or sequencing improvements like the previous option. Now these two overrides need to be used separately. So our recommendation is to first try optimize for local orders and see if you like the solution. And if not, give the RSP penalty factor a try. All right, we've talked abstractly long enough. Let's switch over to RTS Pro and take a look at how to actually set up some problems. All right, now in ArcGIS Pro, we're in a small section of San Diego, and I'd like to start by showing how to set up the problem for automatic meter reading. If we zoom in here, we can see that there's an order location for most of the buildings in this region. And since for automatic meter reading, the driver does not need to get out of the car for readings, and it has enough range to pick up both sides of the streets, we just need to go down the street once in either direction. So if we zoom back out, all of the blue circles are the initial customer locations or orders, and the green square is the office location or depot. We also said a few minutes ago that every VRP problem needs routes. They don't need to have any geometry as inputs though, just data filled into the attribute parameters. So let's now take a look at the attribute parameters, starting with the orders. First we have the name field. You need a unique name for each order. Here we have it set up with just an index value, but we typically see this as addresses or customer ID numbers. Next is service time. And you can see we have nothing modeled here because the driver doesn't need to stop at each location. The meter reading device will pick up the value as the vehicle drives by. We also don't have anything for time windows. Not something that's really needed in this problem, but it's important for me to point out because by leaving these blank, we're able to get into the override optimized for local orders. The next thing I want to touch on is the quantity fields. We have nine, nine delivery quantity fields and nine pickup quantity fields to model multiple different dimensions of the product being delivered or picked up. However, in this case, they can be left blank because the amount of data gathered at each location is not a limiting factor in this problem. The last attribute is the curb approach. So scrolling all the way to the, the end, you can see that we've got our curb approach set to either side of vehicle. This allows the vehicle to drive down the street in either direction, picking up the data as it goes. Let's switch over to depots. This is a very simple setup. The only thing modeled here is the name field, which is central office. Everything else is left as defaults. And now let's take a look at the attributes we have for routes. We're modeling just two to handle this small section. The two drivers will be Laurel and Stuart. To be able to get into optimize for local orders override, other than this name field being different, everything else about the routes need to be modeled exactly the same. So to start, we've got our start depot and end depot name, both showing as the central office. And this is where our drivers will start and end their day. It's important to have this match exactly the name field used for the depots. Scrolling over, we'll next take a look at our capacity fields. We also have nine capacity fields to match the nine pickup and nine delivery quantity fields. And these would be used to indicate what the limit for each of the possible nine dimensions of quantity is for the vehicle. In this case, again, we don't really have any limiting factors, so we'll leave them all blank. Scrolling over a bit more is the cost fields. We opted to only use the cost per unit time field, but we can also model fixed costs, cost per unit distance, and overtime costs. Lastly, we have some options for limiting the routes. We can limit them based on total times, distance, and order counts. In this case, we're using max order count and max total time. All right, that's it for our attributes. We also discussed wanting to make sure the spatial clustering was turned on. So if we go to our VRP ribbon in the cluster drop down here, we've got two options for spatial clustering. 
either cluster or do not cluster. We want to make sure that this is set to cluster. And the last thing that we wanted was to be able to use those two overrides. So for this, instead of using the run button, we're going to use the solve geoprocessing tool. So in the geoprocessing pane, we'll go to the solve tool. And here you can select your VRP layer and for overrides using the format from the slides. And in this case, I've got it set up for optimized for local orders. Now that's how we would set up automatic meter reading. What if instead we wanted to model garbage pickup? What would need to change? So I've got another option here for us to take a look at for garbage pickup. Uh, so the geometry hasn't changed at all, but we've changed some of the parameters for orders and routes. So we'll start by taking a look at the orders again. In this case, we've added in service time for each order since the garbage truck since the garbage truck needs to actually stop at each location to put the garbage into the truck. Still no time windows, so we can get into the Optimize for Local Orders override. And if I scroll over further, you can see that we now have a delivery quantity, and it's in delivery quantity underscore one. So as I mentioned, we have a limited set of parameters that we are currently supporting for Optimize for Local Orders. And one of the big ones is that we only support the single delivery quantity underscore one field and have not yet expanded it to support more of the delivery quantity fields or any of the pickup quantity fields. But I know this is a garbage pickup problem. So shouldn't we be using pickup quantity field? Well, since we want to take advantage of the improvements available in the override, we have switched all of the pickup quantity fields to delivery quantity fields. And as long as you have the entire problem where it's all pickups, you can easily model that as all deliveries. And it took me a while to get my head around that. So here's how I ended up thinking about it. Instead of starting with the truck empty and slowly filling it up with trash, we are starting the day with a truck full of potential to pick up trash and slowly delivering out that potential as we stop at each customer location taking their trash. The last thing that we need to change is the curb approach. So again, if we scroll to the far side, you can see that I've switched it over to right side of vehicle for all of the orders. And this means that at each customer location, the truck and the garbage bin will be on the same side of the street. And to service both sides of the street, the vehicle will need to travel down the street twice, once in each direction. Now, if you're modeling for some place that drives on the left side of the street, change your curb approach to left side of vehicle. All right, that's it for orders. Let's take a look at the changes we've made for routes. In this case, the only thing we've changed is the capacities. So we now have a value at capacity underscore one, and this indicates the amount of garbage that this truck is able to pick up. That's all I have for looking at the initial setup of these problems. Now I'll pass it over to Shibata to take a look at the workflow. Thank you, Heather. As Heather explained, when working with the VRP solver, we have a wide range of constraints in the VRP layer, like time windows on orders, breaks on routes, and many more. Here, our problem is much simpler in terms of constraints on the orders or routes. I'll first show you a pictorial representation of an approach to solve this problem using the VRP solver, and then we can look at the GP tool written with this workflow, and we'll look at the results when such a problem is run with that GP tool. I'll also show you a link to download the GP toolbox so you can take advantage of the tool as it is, or you may make any changes to the tool according to your needs. So let's start with the pictorial representation of how this problem could be solved with VRP Solver. These are all the locations that need meter reading. Here we have two routes or drivers. They all should start from the same location and end at the same location. Here that location is this central office. It is necessary that all the routes or drivers have the same constraints. We call those homogeneous routes in VRP lingo. And that is because the solver override explained earlier would work when the routes are the same, among other criteria for using that override. Also make sure the spatial clustering option in the ribbon is turned on. It is on by default, so you don't need to change anything as such when you start with a new VRP layer. 
The lines you see here are the street lines from the local network data set. The first step towards solving this problem is to get a consolidated order for each street segment that represents the individual orders on that street. So essentially, if you have these 16 orders on this street, there would be just one consolidated order shown in green circle here. You don't have to do that manually. You can take advantage of the feature to point GP tool. If you have service time, like in case of manual meter reading or garbage pickup, you have to specify service time for the consolidated order. That is the addition of these individual service times for the orders to be served on that street. The curve approach of these new consolidated orders should be set to no U-turn for this VRP solve. And th that is because we want the driver to go all the way through the street so all the orders on that street are served by the same route. Spatial clustering option should be turned on to solve this problem. And then when all this is set, solve this problem with the override optimize for local order set to one. For that problem, this is how the results would look like. There would not be just one or two orders on a route, even in the intermediate solve in real world. This is just to give you an idea of the approach. For each such orders, save the route name. And then for each route with individual orders on the streets, solve the problem with route solver that comes with network analyst extension. Route solver would give sequencing and navigation directions for each route with the given stops. When you solve that, you get a solution like this. So there are two routes and the sequencing in the routes show a zigzag pattern and we are fine with that because the driver drives down the path and does not have to get down and park and that is the most efficient way to read all the meters in one go. So in a nutshell, this is the workflow. You have an original layer with locations. You solve VRP with consolidated orders and then solve TSP with route solver for each route. You can do all these steps manually and write your own scripts later or you could take advantage of the scripts I've already written. I automated this process in a Python script and created a Python toolbox. Let me show you the tool in ArcGIS Pro. So let me open the tool. I made the tool very simple with just two arguments, a layer file and the curve approach. Let's input the layer file. In this case, it is either side of vehicle because this is an automated meter reading problem. Keep the default and hit run. In case if you want to solve a garbage pickup problem with this tool, you just have to set the curb approach to right side of the vehicle, assuming the trucks have the equipment needed for picking up the garbage. Alternatively, if it is manual garbage pickup, either side of curb approach might be fine for that problem as well. Please make a note that this is just an approach to solve such a problem with VRP because this solver was designed to solve problems like package delivery or inspection routing. And the approach I just showed you is a workaround for solving high density problems with SRI's VRP solver. And this seems to do good for simpler problems. This will take a few seconds and that's because although we have made improvements to our solver, in this script it solves VRP once and TSP twice. So there are three runs serially and that takes time. So after a few seconds, we have got the results. After you get the results, you can share directions with the drivers when you are done solving this problem. Let's go back to the slides to see if the quality of our results is good. Are these routes good? Is the sequencing good? And is, if the clustering is good? Let's see. So for sequencing, we can see that it is a zigzag pattern like we expected. So that's good. Clustering wise, these are pretty well separated routes. There is no intervening between the routes. So I'm happy with clustering as well. 
I solved the same problem for garbage pickup and this is what I got. So do you think these routes are good? The difference here is we have set the curb approach to be right side of the vehicle and that's why you'd see that the sequence is serial. So all the orders on the right side of the vehicle are served serially. And that is what we expect from a garbage pickup problem. We also set the U-turn policy to be no U-turn and that is because it is hard for a garbage pickup truck to take U-turns where it is not necessary. And that's why it is taking U-turn only when there is no option. So I'm happy with these results. I hope you find a good solution for your business problem with the same approach as well. The best advice is try it. When you try this workflow and you get stuck, here are a few resources to help you find a way. If you get a question, write us on the GeoNet community. At the end of this list, we have provided a link that will take you to the network analyst page on that community. And here is the URL from where you can download the slide deck, the Python script and the GP toolbox. While explaining the override, optimized for local orders, we mentioned that we'll show at the end the full requirements for a VRP to be qualified to use this override. So here those are. And please provide your feedback for this session by clicking on the session survey link directly below the video. Thank you.